Hi there friends and welcome to Skillnadens Flower Farm and Nursery. Or is it maybe a garden center? I don't know actually. My name is Sarah and I have many suggestions from you on what to call a place like this, but none of them seems to be, you know, the correct word. Uh, in Swedish we would say handelsträdgård. Um, and that means that it is kind of, uh, it's not a garden center. It, this is a place, you know, where we grow things, we sell plants, we sell cut flowers, we also sell like arrangements and some tools, etc. So I, ca I can't seem to find the correct word. Help me, please continue to send me uh, suggestions on what you would like to call a place like this. So we are now in middle of winter, it's February, uh, just the start of the month. Uh, we are having lots and lots of snow, cold temperatures, and we are in our best season for tulips. And we also start to harvest some of the um, oh, nar narcissus, <laughs> another great cut flowers that we grow uh, in, um, in one of our heated greenhouses. So it's really a nice time of the year and um, I am happy that you want to, to follow the work here and see how we, we do things. A um, lot of joy for me and my colleagues, of course. And as I said, we are now in our best time for tulips. Uh, we start them actually under the floor where we have a very cool basement. Uh, where we keep the bulbs for like 12 weeks for them to root correctly and then we carry them up in our heated greenhouse uh, where we can harvest them like um, three to five weeks after we carry them up. Uh, so now we have so so many tulips um, um, down here in our basement uh, to store them in a cold place and in just a few days we are going to sell all of them because it is like Valentine's Day in Sweden uh, next week. So this is a really exciting time of the year. Uh, unfortunately, I would say uh, winter is also a time uh, when we have quite many funerals in Sweden. It's a sad time. Uh, this is also something that we notice in my business because we do lots and lots of arrangements with flowers for funerals. And in this video I would like to uh, invite you to come with me uh, an evening when I prepare flowers for a funeral. We sometimes get those very specific questions about flowers uh, and we can we can do things in this small business that you cannot get help with in a traditional flower shop, for example. So many of the people who call us and say they want to have help with flowers for a funeral, uh, they want to use like materials from um, their, um, their own garden, for example, or uh, the forest where their dad lived or um, did a lot of work, etc. So most often we try to, to figure out how to help people to get a very specific way of how the flowers look, etc. Um, and it is a great joy to, to do that, to help people to have that, that ceremony uh, in in way that a family wishes. So for this uh, specific um, ceremony, um, the, um, uh, the question was if I could do uh, a com composable, decomposable wreath uh, with only like uh, natural uh, material. And the family also wanted to have like a larger piece on the coffin, um, looking more, more like, um, a border, a spring border with flowers suitable for this season and they wanted it to look almost as if the flowers you know were picked yesterday, uh, this was before the snow, uh, but a spring-ish theme. So first of all you will see me do this wreath. Uh, they asked for a decomposable wreath with natural materials uh, that means that I don't use this traditional oasis, which is a, 
foam, a floral foam, where you simply stick the, um, the stems into this foam and they stay upright or whatever. So instead I, I do this uh, reed, a base with branches. Uh, I cover it with moss and I then stick the flowers into this. And this is how it looks when I did this wreath. I hope you enjoy it. I often compare this kind of work with writing one of my books. <laughs> you start with an empty page and more or less you think of it each time as is this really going to be something that you can be proud of etc because it looks kind of poor you know when you you start this project and then in the end of it it looks like it's beautiful it's it's really really stunning and I do prefer those pieces with um, the natural materials instead of using the floral foam because it comes more like alive in a, in a way. Um, so this was the first thing I did um, and you saw me using the, the tulips, the moss, 
uh, branches and some leaves from our own um, uh, farm. And also I brought another few spring flowers that we can actually find in our own farm uh, in a few weeks time, a few months time. And next thing I did was a bit more complicated uh, because the family wanted to have like a large piece, a long piece uh, placed on the coffin. So I simply used this table um, pretending it is the coffin. Uh, and I uh, did four pieces with this floral foam oasis. Uh, it's not a decomposable, more like environmental friendly um, material, uh, but this is what, what we could use for, for this um, specific piece. Uh, and what I did was simply, I placed them out on this table. I covered it with moss and I then stuck the, the stems into the material and created this more like a, a border, more or less, with upright tulips and then um, uh, tasset. Uh, we also used the pensies from our own uh, farm. We have them in the cold greenhouse and lots and lots of other flowers. And now you can enjoy the work and I hope you like it. I did a, a Swedish podcast a few months ago telling my readers and followers about this work. For me, it has been, um, it's not a tricky thing, but you know, it is very emotional to do flowers for, for someone's, you know, the most important goodbye, uh, farewell, more or less. So you have to do it very carefully and it took me years you know, starting with this and getting information and a lot of advice from my mentor, Anastina. Uh, but I have been very, very humble and respectful for, for this, um, this work. And now when I do it, I feel exactly the same, I think, as my mentor, Anastina, saying that this might be the most important work that we do to help people, um, you know, find, find this frame in a way, uh, for the ceremony and to tell something with the flowers. I mean, it, it is, I know for myself, when I have been to a funeral, for example, this is where you lay your eyes on 
in a moment of sadness, of confusion, of everything. And it's very important that the flowers are the way you want it to be. You, you cannot, as we would say in Sweden, slarva. You, can make, you cannot make a mess of it. It has to be perfect, right? So for, for this it was very special because I have never done a piece like that. So I was a bit uh, nervous on how it would turn out. And my colleagues uh, went to the church and they arranged it. Um, because when I had finished the piece, I had to um, sort of drag it apart into four pieces so that we could deliver it in the car. And then they put it all together in the coffin in church the day after. Uh, and I was told it, it looked very pretty and nice. And the family also got back to me saying huge thank you because they really loved how it turned out. So that was very nice uh, for me. And uh, yeah, this is a part of my work now. I n could never imagine that <laughs> when, when I started my career being like some kind of gardening influence that I would end up here doing this kind of work. But I really enjoy it. And um, well, this is what I'm actually going to do for this evening. I'm going to create a few pieces for a funeral tomorrow. Uh, using a lot and lot and lot of tulips from, from our farm. So this was what I wanted to, to show you um, some of in this video. I hope you enjoyed it uh, and welcome back another time in another video. Bye from Sarah in Sweden. Mm -hmm.